the Brewers were given a third All-Star game nod, who's most deserving? Willie Adamas, Andrew McCutcheon, Rowdy Telez, Devin Williams. Maybe you want to write in somebody. We don't really have the hardware, I guess, the software to do that. But yeah, yeah. You can tell us. Devin Williams probably the best shot on that uh, list there. Uh, I would write in, I think, Vinny Rotino. I agree, you me know, too. In terms of a guy who uh, has, we've known him, watched him play a long time, but he's popped up onto the broadcast scene recently and is really, you can see that scouting background, you hear it, he explains the game so well. He's been a tremendous addition to the Bally Sports crew. And Vinny, we're happy to have you on here tonight. And I know you've been talking Brewers all day long, so capping it off with us is pretty good. But not a great day for the Brewers, so I'm sorry we have you on on a kind of a downer note. Are you concerned about where things sit right now with the crew? I'm really not just because of the fact that their pitching staff is still so good. And then they have a healthy Brandon Woodruff coming. I mean, he's back. I mean, three really spectacular starts for Brandon Woodruff. And then you have Aaron Ashby obviously coming back off that forearm, which was a big concern. I mean, this guy is a potential future all-star and he's pitching like it at times. And then you have Freddie Peralta coming back off the, off the uh, IL pretty soon as well. So, I mean, the pitching staff's getting to be full strength. The back end of the bullpen still intact. They will score runs. You get Hunter Renfro back. I mean, they have the pieces to make a run in the playoffs. Um, we'll see if they add anything to this roster at the trade deadline. But, I mean, I, I really think this is still a team that can that can really win the NL Central. Win it, win it handily, quite frankly. Uh, it just depends how, how hot the, the Cardinals do get as well. But, I think this is a team poised to make a deep run. Well, you mentioned a couple of things there. Number one, will they make a move? David Stearns, Matt Arnold generally do, so you'd think they would do something perhaps offensively there. And in this division, it's a two-horse race. There's no question about it. But you need to beat up those bottom teams to kind of boost your record. That's why this week was a little bit uh, daunting or, or eye-opening, I guess. Um, Vinny, you, you talked about the pitching staff. You get a Freddie Peralta bobblehead today, but Freddie Peralta coming back, people have kind of – They've slipped their mind on what he could offer this team. If you get those those guys back, Woodruff, Peralta, the two guys at the front of the rotation right now, that's pretty formidable. I mean, you have three potential Cy Young Award winners in those guys. I mean, Freddie Peralta pitched like a top 10 pitcher in the entire league. When when you look at the, the wins above replacement, the war stat is essentially just a measurement of who you know how good you are and, and what your production is. And Freddie Peralta was near the top of the league last year in that category. And then, you yeah, you have Woodruff, you have Burns. So that's three guys. I mean, any team would just totally kill just to have one of those guys, and the Brewers have three. As soon as you get Freddie Peralta back, that's a really good sign for this team. Um, and then Eric Lauer, I mean, he, he's he's pitching really solidly. And then again, Aaron Ashby. So you got the you got the pitching staff to do it. Can they score runs on a consistent basis? It, it's it's been a struggle for really a lot of teams around the league, just because pitching is better than hitting at this point with all the pitching labs that are implemented in, in the spring training compl- complexes. Meaning they can figure out ways to get guys out. You know. They're using all the technology to do so. So it's difficult. At the same time, they do have pieces in place that can still hit, get on base, have the quality at bat. Just got to get a little bit more consistent with that for them to really take that next step. And Vinny, speaking of one big piece of the puzzle offensively, that is Christian Yelich and this ball club moving him to the leadoff spot. What have you think thought of how he's really done at that leadoff spot offensively? Because he had a, a long hitting streak going on recently. Yeah, so, you know, Christian Yelich, I think he's found his new role in that leadoff spot. Um, we, we've seen him obviously play like an MVP type caliber player in, you know, as recent as 2019. It's been a couple of years since we've seen that version of him. He's just not been as consistent. I think you take a little bit of pressure off him, you put him in that leadoff spot, allow him just to work those walks. He has a great on base percentage ever since he's been leading off. Um, he looks pretty good over there in that spot. So um, I would just continue to keep him there and get on base for guys like Willie Adamas and Rowdy Telez and when Hunter Renfro comes back. And uh, Vinny, six more games until that uh, much-needed all-star break. You have the Twins, a division leader, and then you have the Giants to bookend this uh, first half of the, uh, you know, of the regular season. Is there anything you want to see from this Brewers squad in those six games before they get that break? Well, yeah, let's see a sweep. Let's win. Let's win two against the Twins and then four against the San Francisco Giants. But yeah, I mean, you don't want to limp into the playoffs or into, I'm sorry, into the all-star break. You want to end on a positive note there because, yeah, I mean, I think I think the Brewers are still going to win this division. I think it will be a race. 
So between, you know, the, the Cardinals and the Brewers. So you want to see a really positive end to this first half, regroup, get those guys full strength, get them healthy, and then go ahead in that second half, poise for that deep run. Vinny, you play, and we see those jerseys behind you. You've got everything back there but a City Connect jersey. It looks pretty sweet in your little <laughs> studio there. Vinny, I was talking about uh, Rowdy Telez, who was so hot carrying the offense there for a while. Then it goes into a more inconsistent uh, stretch, and that happens with so many hitters. You played at the highest level. How hard is it to find that consistency when you know the team looks to you for production? Yeah, I mean, it really is difficult at times because teams are finding out different ways to pitch you, and each team is going to pitch you a little bit differently. Rowdy Telez is a guy that's a hitter first and a slugger who also slugs, right? I mean, we've seen this from him. Um, yeah, I think I think he's a guy that, in, and this is his next step in his development, I think he's a guy that gets a little bit hard on himself at times. So if he's struggling, he will really struggle. So I think he's going to learn how to minimize those down periods a little bit he still hits the ball extremely hard hits the ball as hard as anybody in the big leagues near the top end of the league and all those hard hit categories barrel percentages all that stuff he's had some hard luck this year as well i mean we saw him two days ago hit three balls right on the screws and got one hit out of it and that was the blooper that he hit off the end of the bat so um i think he's just got to continue to just have quality at bats and the production is, is, is going to be there for him. Well, it's going to be a really, really fun season, Vinny. And quickly, I want to ask you, has there been one player that's really surprised you this first half of the season? Um, I, honestly, I, I'm surprised a little bit by how good Devin Williams is. I mean, mm -hmm. we know how good he is, but he's been really scary good. I mean, he's second in the league in strikeouts per nine. Um, the fastball and the usage of his repertoire, it's been pretty impressive, the, the changes that he has made to his repertoire. He's thrown the fastball a lot more. They found out that he was tipping his pitches early on in the season. That's when he was really struggling. And ever since then, he's been absolutely lights out. He's given up runs in only two outings this year. And then the rest of them has been all zeros. He's unhittable when that changeup is on, but now all of a sudden he's commanding that fastball. Right there, you see that at the top of the zone. It's been a little bit of a surprise for me just because, you know, the league will figure you out. And Devin Williams has made the adjustment. They, you can sense that teams are sitting on that, that changeup early on, and now all of a sudden he's got that fastball to pair with it. Well, not that there aren't flukes, but Boxberger Williams haters, awfully good at the back end of any bullpen. Hey, Vinny Gortino, awfully good tonight as well. Appreciate you staying up with us and joining us. We'll do this again for sure. Uh, good luck on the road trip out there with Ballard.